is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, I know what you're thinking, but you know what? I forgot to launch the little app uh, that does this. So give me just a second because we'd like to come to you at this time, but sometimes I just get distracted. And when I get distracted, I forget to launch this program. But we normally come to you. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Normally come to you at this time. Uh, so what do we have going on in the markets now? It's uh, all about hurrying up and wait. Everybody wants to get a view of what the earnings are going to look like. We had Citigroup and Goldman Sachs out before the bell. Didn't seem to do a lot to put uh, a fire under the market. Uh, but at the same time, not a lot of sellers. I continue to think the psychology of the market is everybody thinks that they know that the trade deal is going to be the next moment. So that they don't want to get out and miss it. And as soon as it comes out, I think that we're going to have a bunch of people thinking that they're going to sell the top by selling in to the pop. How about that? I'm going to have to write that down. Sell the top by selling into the pop. Anyway, uh, off three points on the S&P cash. Volume has not been good, either higher or lower for the last week. Uh, just uh, doing, uh, let's update this just to make darn sure, 3.4 billion shares. We got to about 3.9, or uh, yeah, no, excuse me, uh, 6.9 billion shares on Friday. So, and we've done a little, you know, just a little less on the down days than the up days, but the up days aren't anywhere close uh, to where they have to be to really see a bull market that's truly charging. Um, what would you call a bull market that is uh, kind of been, uh, eh, not so much bull? Maybe like three-eighths bull? Maybe a quarter bull? Quarter bull. That's about all the volume's good for now. But uh, it probably one eighth bear. The, the, the Mr. Bear's in hibernation. He kind of growls every once in a while, but that's about it too. So we've got a market kind of hanging out at these levels. We've got a lot of people thinking that man, if they just hang on, the market's going to bounce. And generally, kind of a bad uh, way to go through a uh, at least an investing perspective. On a trading perspective, the risk reward has to be there, and it's very tough to find a lot of stocks that offer any kind of risk reward right now. And uh, got a handful of stocks down at the bottom. If we start heading down, they could break through ice. Uh, a lot of stocks up the highs, but very light volume. So we've got uh, a lot of stuff going on here today. We'll do some history. We'll go through some charts. I'll be back in the four o'clock hour where we'll go through a lot of the earnings, uh, both uh, this morning, tonight, uh, after the bell and in the morning. So we'll get you all ready for your trading day tomorrow. Uh, in the meantime, it's history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is history. And on this day in 19, not a 1981, 1912. I don't know how I did that. Again. I guess because I'm distracted, we'll change that. 1912 at uh, 2.20 a.m., the British Ocean Liner Titanic sinks into the North Atlantic, uh, about 400 miles south of Newfoundland, Canada. The massive ship, which carried about 2,200 passengers and crew, had struck an iceberg two and a half hours before. And uh, my grandmother, I remember being, I'm going to say 12, 13 years old, and... Uh, she was uh, watching one of the bad Titanic movies made, I think, probably like in the 40s or maybe even the 30s. It was an old one. And the, the ship looked like a toy. 
when it you know was sinking. And of course, it certainly didn't break in half like we know now. Uh, but uh, she told me, being a young girl, so she would have been about ten years old. She was born in 1902. Um. Anyway, she uh, was saying about you know that nobody had phones. She was in a little area called Macon, Missouri, which is about uh, 30 miles east of Springfield, Missouri, uh, where she told me about her life growing up and uh, how pretty horrible it was for the most part. Uh, but, uh, oh, on that day in the movie, she told me all about how when she was uh, 10 years old, I guess that would have been right, 1912, uh, that the bell just started ringing. And that's the only way that they had to tell anybody about anything. And, of course, uh, they all went into town and found out that they, all the people had died on the Titanic. Of course, most of those people had never been out of the county uh, or the state that they lived in, much less cross across the entire ocean. Um, pretty much uh, the uh, descendants of the Civil War at that time, what, uh, 40 50 years after. Anyway, um, that was my first, I think, introduction to the Titanic, listening to most of that. Later on, I would not know how important it would be in my life as it uh, became a giant movie. I'd made a product uh, for the uh, people in special effects and television in Hollywood. Uh, if you think that desktop publishing was something, of course, it would be nothing with the la without the laser printer. I basically uh, didn't write the uh, the big software that made animation, but I was able to make a very inexpensive way for them to have lots and lots of animators. It was called platooning. Uh, when you look at some of the animation early in 1980, or 19, let's call it 90, um, that really made it, it was made with a handful of people with a very, very expensive computers. When we got to the Titanic, uh, in the uh, late 1990s, um, there were 45 animators on it. Uh, in fact, they rented out the uh, uh, QE2 in Long Beach uh, and actually had a scale model of the Titanic to do a lot of the uh, inside stuff where they could move it and jack it up and down and slosh water around in it. I spent eight weeks uh, living on the QE2 in the hotel room and all my Clients were uh, in the, uh, in the uh, well, they had this giant meeting room, and they basically turned it in to a place to do all the animation for the movie coming out. Uh, many Anyway, we spent, uh, I spent about six weeks, uh, no, eight weeks there, almost eight, almost, uh, I remember it was almost the entire winter, which I loved. Uh, and then they got onto it, and they were there for, I think, uh, almost, almost a year. Uh, working on it. And of course, the movie ran out of money, and uh, the director decided to use his vast sums of wealth and put $120 million of his own money into it, uh, which later made him a billionaire. Uh, he said, I'll just buy the movie from you, and I'll put all the extra money in it for you. But it ended up being a big thing because uh, it, uh, it was a little, kind of the press uh, that drove our company public and got me down here to Florida. I ran like hell as soon as we went public. In the meantime, we'll be back after this. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. We're still sitting off three points on the S&P cash. The uh, Dow's down 26, Nasdaq's down 18, and a Russell off uh, seven and a half. Um, anyway, we're going to get to uh, a lot of uh, charts here, so why don't we go ahead and start on the way there? Uh, okay. Um, did a lot of uh, looking at charts over the weekend. I'd say seven out of eight are hitting highs if they're giving signals on lighter volume. Uh, AECOM, which is ACM, the symbol for that, going into a couple of previous highs at 31, 32 bucks. February 5th had $32 with 1.9 million shares. Got almost there on 1.2 million shares on March 4th. Uh, we're actually, nope, we're not into that, are we? Okay, let's do this. Uh, oh, that's what I did wrong. Hang on a second. Uh, let's do this again. There we get. Um, got into that a little bit today. You got 444, 445,000 so far. And of course, you got to really, you know, you had a lot better volume when we didn't break the high. On Friday, that had 752,000 shares, but, um, you know, maybe we get 600,000 shares today, but at best, that's half the March 4th high and a third of the March 5th high. And uh, I got lots of stuff going on here today. AER, when we look at this, couple of previous highs in the uh, mid to high 48ths on January 30th, 1.7 million shares. On February 19th, 2.19 million shares for Eurocap Holdings. AER is the symbol on that for you people at home. Uh, today, 442,000 shares as we get in to 49.70 on the high. And Friday, 732,000 shares. So again, very, very light volume on the way up and very, very white, light volume. Maybe even just a shade lighter on the way down at the moment, but uh, a brittle market, because if you got any really bad news, it would be problematic. Allergen, Allegion, 
A-L-L-E, bouncing around these $94 highs back from December 3rd. That had a million shares, tried again on February 13th with 600,000 shares, tried to get into it with 750,000 shares on the 5th. Uh, Friday, you had 438,000 shares. Today, 270,000 shares so far. Uh, we did say that we would talk about Goldman Sachs and others. And, of course, you can email me at pat at tfnn.com and uh, email me at d uh, 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 pat.com and give me a call at 877-927-6648. Got to go to Tony. How you doing today, Tony? Good. Thank you, Dave, David, for taking my call. Uh, as you were going into the earnings, I would like to uh, know about Bank of America and as well as XLF. How do you see that? Well, we certainly didn't have anything that looked like uh, um, a, a jump for joy today uh, on the other bankers uh, in the morning uh, from, uh, where's that here? Come on. Oop, I got to get back there. Hang on a second. Okay. Uh, before the bell, of course, uh, we were talking about it earlier, both Citigroup and Goldman Sachs. Um, not really getting the kind of reaction I think people, if they just read the headlines, uh, would expect. And of course, Bank of America down a little bit on that. Uh, the earnings do come out before the bell in the morning. And what are they looking for out here? Uh, EPS is 65 cents a share, revenues of uh, 23.3 billion. United Health, Johnson and Johnson also in the morning. Um, I mean, you had all the volume to take out the high on Friday. You had 100 million shares compared to the 58 million shares. That part looks good. The part that looks horrible in this entire market uh, is the low off that March 5th low. There was no energy all the way back up except on Friday, and that was it. So they ran everybody on the gap higher. Uh, now you got a whole lot of nothing going on. My guess, probably about like what we saw from Citigroup today, and you know that's just a whole lot of nothing. Um, you know, unless something drastically is wrong with it, my guess is that it kind of goes sideways fairly close to the price it's at. I mean, that's the reaction we got today. Do you have anything that you're thinking? Be you long it already? Yeah, thinking to go long, uh, uh, just not decided right now. <laughs> for for, the, for earnings? Play before earnings or after earnings? Well, since, since Citigroup didn't do anything, and since the other ones haven't done anything, I don't understand where probably the risk reward is for going long before the earnings. See what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, I, got I you. you know, maybe do you have something else? Do you work for the company? Do you know somebody that does that where they're gonna have some kind of blowout earnings? No, no, no. I don't know about anything. So okay. I was just, you, I, you know, know, kind of uh, looking that they might go up. That is what my thought was by looking at. But you're right. It's 50-50 kind of thing. Yeah, it, it's a coin flip. And, you know, they didn't react well today. Now, you're going into a four-day, you know, we're in a four-day week. Volume almost always is light. It's probably going to get it even lighter. You probably don't want to be short into that. But you could be a couple of days away from one of the biggest bearish uh, signals that we get in the market if we continue to go up on such light volume. We get up another 50 points in the S&P cash. We could be making the biggest signal that we've had in 10 years. So, you know, I just, the risk reward is, you know, probably 80% that it goes up 2% and 20% it goes down 10%. And, you know, I just don't see the risk reward where it goes up 10% and goes down 2%. See what I'm saying? I mean, if they yeah, really miss, or if they really miss, but 80% chance is going to be a buck or two higher tomorrow, right? And I just don't understand making that kind of bet. I want to get into a position that I think is at least, maybe over time, going to be at least 20 or 30% higher, but I'm a swing trader. It wouldn't be for a day trade. Um, you know, you're going to be able to, to 
play this in the pre-market. That would be the other thing, not wait for the opening. If you get some really good numbers, maybe you can get in and then see whether it performs tomorrow. But my guess is that it the, the reactions are going to be fairly muted for the rest of the week uh, and probably drift ever so slightly higher into Thursday's close. Uh, we need some kind of trade deal or something else that I just don't see yet in a market to get anything going right now. But uh, yeah, you know, things have been different. But uh, think about uh, maybe playing it after the earnings come out in the morning. What Thank other you. Options? You bet. We'll be back shortly. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. And somebody asked me to to uh, text or uh, text them back something, and of course they block all their texts. So I don't know what kind of technology that you can do. It, it has to, I guess, know that uh, uh, that you're available. Let me finish this. This. Um. <laughs> Um, Almost nothing I have to take care of why I'm on the air, but this is actually one. 
Um, what else do we have? Okay, that's good. Um, let's look at some other out here. And that's AMH. Uh, you're going through the American Homes for Rent. This is the August 29th high, $23.18, 3.5 million shares. Went through it on Friday with 2 million shares. You got a little doji out here today. Any close below 23.18 would be extremely problematic. Um, AVY, which is uh, 114.60. This is Avery Dennison. July 25th, it's hit that high with 1.15 million shares. Uh, got back into that on Friday with 561,000 shares. Today, 316,000 shares. So again, fairly light. Uh, Benchmark Electronics uh, hitting its uh, February 8th high. It was $29 at 654,000 shares. Today, 128,000 shares Friday. He had uh, 280,000 shares, so uh, trying to get to half the volume is pretty big. Now, in that sector, uh, got a new CEO coming in on Best Buy. Uh, it opened a little lower out here, and I think you got a, probably a fairly good bet that uh, Best Buy is going to come back to at least 62 bucks. Uh, with a new CEO, they almost always try to clean out all the excesses of the previous CEO. Um, and I, I was listening, I think it was Bloomberg when I was out at lunch and man, were they lauding the previous CEO who's been there for, I don't know, six years or so. I think it was 2012 when he came in. Um, but when you look at this company, there's one thing that's made this company actually any money over all that period. And it wasn't a stroke of genius. It was basically stores within a store. Uh, which other people had tried, um, he actually made it pay. And three-fourths of all the income of a Best Buy store is right when you walk in there and you hit the phone department. They made the deal with Apple uh, to be in all those places that Apple retail stores aren't, uh, and uh, the so-called genius bars. I've met a few of those guys. Uh, they seem like dopes to me. But, uh, I don't know. And a little little on the hyperbole there for calling somebody a genius. I've actually met real geniuses, so maybe that's eh, what I'm looking at. Anyway, Best Buy put in the phone business. It's been three-fourths of their profit. Um, they've got, you know, they do sell other stuff, uh, but a lot of that stuff, you know, makes money, but it doesn't make money, money like that phone business does because they get a taste of that every single month after you buy the phone. And that's it. If, sale, if phone sales start really knocking off this fall, uh, especially for Apple uh, or Samsung, which they have been down, I would uh, say that maybe even that 62 will not hold. Uh, to BLMN, which is a Blooming Brands, looks like it's getting ready to come back and test its February 1st low. You had a little bounce today, a little better volume. Uh, you're back into that February 1st candle of 2 million shares. Not a bad-looking chart. You may want to keep an eye on this. You want it to test $18.18 .18 on light volume, uh, but one of the few really good-looking charts out there that could be making a bottom. Brady Corporation, unknown if everybody is shown in little boxes across the screen, or if they have a maid, but uh, certainly... You had, uh, on February 21st, $48.40 with 640,000 shares with 164,000 shares on Friday. You got 81,000 shares now. Um, energy just very, very light from that March 21st high and higher. BSIG. We'll look at this one. I mm, guess not. Okay. Cadence Corporation. CADE, a light volume test of the March 19th high. CADE is the symbol, $20.73 on that March 19th high, 1.8 million shares. Got into it with 1.25 million shares on Friday. Today, peaked just a little bit above it and pulled back down below. 
Volume, though, is still light, under 300,000 shares so far. CBS uh, hitting a little high of uh, February 25th. It's $51.71, 75 cents, excuse me, uh, 4.3 million shares. Last three days, 2.6 million shares. Friday, 2.5 million shares. Today, 1 million shares as you go back up there. Energy about the same on the way up and the same on the way down. Generally, a tie goes to the runner, which is a bull almost always. So probably going to at least go above the previous high. Career Education Company, been watching this go into its big February 21st spike. Got to $17.72 with 1.6 million shares. Got into it on Friday with 652,000 shares. Today, 182,000 shares. Super, super light. How are we doing here? Got another two minutes in this segment. Uh, CoreLogic, been banging against this $41 uh, range for a while now. Um, depending on what you're looking for, um, you need to see something like about 900,000 shares we got uh, 450,000 so far today. Um, but uh, you're coming back into down days that had 1.7 million shares and man, 600,000 shares. But that gap going back to October 25th is going to be the real resistance for this stock. What else do we have? COG. Take a look at that one. Cabot Oil and Gas. We've talked the last couple of days about how it certainly looked to me that energy was topping out uh, when I looked earlier at crude. It was being crude, and it was down 52 cents, 63.37. I think it just slowly kind of pulls back to the $55 area. It certainly acts like, uh, at least for the moment, that higher prices are not going to be there, even if I'm wrong on lower ones. Cabot Oil and Gas going into the November 14th high, that's uh, $27.32, 12.4 uh, million shares. Got into it with 4.4 million shares on Friday. Today, you went and hit just a slightly higher high of 27.65, closed back below it with 2 million shares. CRI, which is Carter's, as we talked about their Carter Little Pills last week, we continue to see them test a 4 million share high with a uh, fairly light volume on Friday, 463,000 shares today, 332,000 so far. We'll be back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. We're back on the air. I was distracted during the uh, break and watching the uh, watching the uh, Notre Dame Cathedral burn. Ooh, bad, bad, bad. And of course, uh, glad I'm not there because I'd have to play the ugly American and hand out Oscar Mayer hot dogs just to turn lemons into lemonade. Uh, I'm sure they're not happy about that at all. I'm sure there's a lot of art that has been left. So what else do we have? Um, doo -doo -doo, we're going to look at some more. Uh, as we said, we looked at Carter up on a tenth of the volume. That one's extremely dangerous. C-W-E-N, and eh, not much in that one. And marshmallows. Okay. We're going to be very ugly Americans. <laughs> we're going to go out there and... and uh, and get a little chocolate, a little, little Swiss chocolate, have some mores over there. Um, CYCC. Yep. You had a lot of volume for it. It's a penny stock. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. DCI, which is Donaldson Company, going through its recent high of February 25th, $52.67 with 570,000 shares. Got into it with Two or three hundred thousand, about three hundred thousand shares on the eighth and then the fifth. Uh, pulled all the way back down to March twenty fifth um, to forty seven seventeen. Went up to those highs on the fourth and the fifth. Pulled back a little bit. We're back up again. Uh, Friday one hundred sixty six thousand shares. Today just seventy three thousand shares. So extremely, extremely light volume. I did not look and see where earnings are coming up on this one, but this one is so light. June fifth, so you got a while. That would be very interesting. I'm gonna keep that on my list. DK, uh, which isn't around. Delic. Uh, what else do we have? Enterogris, E N T G is the symbol on this one. Um, Seven point. 7 million shares at $40.36. That was on February 26th. Right, we get into it with uh, 2.4 million shares. Uh, today, just 710,000 shares. And this is where the market's brittle, and you've really got to watch for brittle markets because the risk-reward doesn't seem bad at the time. You don't want to be short them, uh, but this is also where we see a lot of times the markets make unexpected or get unexpected news and whomp you bad and make the rest of your year one of catching up instead of making a lot of money. March 1st in Eaton Vance, we saw $42.66 with 1.25 million shares. Spike that with 900,000 shares on Friday and then instantly returned lower today. Uh, I think they're kind of a of mall store, mostly in the north. Um, FAS, which is the financial um, ETF, uh, hit 
the November 8th high, the December 3rd high, those are both in the low 65s, hit it on March 19th, went above it, closed right back below it. You gapped up, a, uh, up on it on Friday. I think a lot of people front running uh, the earnings of the financials. Uh, it's pulled back a little. You had uh, 2.8, 2.9 million shares, so you actually had the volume to hold it up that it is down today on 1 million shares. Kind of interesting, but uh, the history has been these sectors and individual stocks getting up to their eyes and probably two out of 10 breaking out, the rest pulling back into the trading range. Flagstar Bank Corp, FBC. This is the 35.56 high of July 24th. Got to 35.79 on Friday. Spiked it with just 222,000 shares compared to that 1.6 million shares back uh, oh, well, July 24th of last year. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the den. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. National Beverage Company, F-I-Z-Z. -Z. This one actually looks very, very interesting. We need another two bucks to get to the absolute low, but uh, it gapped down on March 8th with, uh, to $50.53 with 5.4 million shares. Friday, just 348,000 shares. Today, just 217,000 uh, shares. Again, you want it to probably pierce that $50.53, even if it's for a moment on the kind of volume that we have now and you have a very, very high risk rewards stock in the fact that you put your stop in just underneath it. If it goes below, closes back above, it should not, if it's going higher, close back below that once again. So a very nice setup there for the low. Back to testing highs on light volume. Uh, flow serve going into its February 20th high, $48.38 that day with 2.3 million shares. Uh, energy from the March 8th low at 41.98 has been tepid at best. Uh, 2.3 million shares uh, was tested on Friday with 448,000 shares. And today you've got 441,000 shares with a little pullback. And at the moment, uh, you are not going to close below that previous high. If you do at the end of the day, flow serve made a fairly decent signal that it would probably be bouncing around in this trading range back to that March 8th low at 41.98, which is a nice range on that. Uh, GNRC, which is a stock that you should be making uh, yourself very uh, readily uh, knowledgeable about. We talked about this one uh, two years ago and one year ago. If there's a hurricane, these guys make the generators. They have a bunch of them sitting in stock. Uh, if a natural disaster happens, these guys cash in big. Uh, did a little bit better. They didn't pull back as far as they have in past years because of all the fires in California and a lot of sales in that area, at least in the United States. What we do have is a couple of highs, one with 500,000 shares, one with one a million six hundred thousand shares in this fifty high fifty four range uh, that was tested with one hundred sixty eight thousand shares on Friday. Um, this is not one you should probably hold, but if you're always watching the weather uh, and you see a hurricane on its way, generally you you may just break even. Uh, but if you do this right. Um, these things, you know, it's not beyond the scope of this move in 20 bucks higher on a hurricane, and we're almost there uh, in hurricane season down here in Florida. Um, oh, we're going to break, and we'll be back shortly, and we'll look at some more stocks. We've got plenty of stuff to look at.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're off three on the S&P cash, 32 on the Dow. Well, let me update that. I'm always afraid that, eh, I guess it is updated. Um, minus 12 on the NASDAQ, uh, Russell off seven. Uh, again, volume very light, probably going to be light all the way into Thursday. Uh, of course, the market's closed on Friday. You might have a little extra volume on Wednesday, and that is uh, probably the day that a lot of people uh, will consider the last trading day of the week uh, if they're big street names. On Thursday, they'll probably be thinking about a way either to leave Wednesday night or leave Thursday at noon as they go into a three-day weekend. Um, and that's about it. You're going to have light volume now. When we come back that Monday, the character of the market, if not the direction, has a big tendency to change over three-day weekends. Uh, the summer ones seem to be the biggest, but even ones like uh, coming up for Easter uh, are too. So you want to watch that, especially when we have such, what, as I'm calling it, a brittle market. That is one that is easily snapped if dropped or shattered if dropped. And that very light volume does two things. It generally runs shorts out by going up slowly until they just give up and they don't want to be short into a three-day weekend. But with a very light volume we have here, there isn't a lot to actually squeeze them with. 
Uh, they will probably still get out, but there's no stampede, which is what you're looking for if you want to sell the top tick into going into one of these longer weekends. Anyway, we've got more earnings in the morning. We'll be talking about that in the 4 o'clock hour of Tom O'Brien's show that I'll be doing in for him today. And uh, then we'll be uh, talking about a lot of other things, too, and some of the earnings after the bell tonight, like J.B. Hunt and other things going on. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we will see you here tomorrow at the same time. Same bat channel, same bat time.